Christian Church. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together here in the sanctuary as we gather on Zoom and on Facebook Live. We want to welcome everyone here, especially our visitors this morning, and we want you to know that we believe that every single person is an equal and beloved child of the divine who deserves kindness and friendship and love and respect and to be treated with dignity. We express our love for one another through sharing and caring and engaging in, um, in, in, in events and activities that uplift everyone. We are open and affirming of absolutely everyone and we strive to be an anti-racist congregation. We come with open minds, willing hands, and committed hearts. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So welcome home. 
I do want to say one quick thing before service gets started, started, before the call to worship, and that is, you all know that we've been, since the first Sunday of, of, uh, of October, we've been um, experimenting, let's say, with how, um, how to receive communion together. Um, and so we've made little tweaks each Sunday. And so we will continue to make little tweaks until we kind of get it right, until it feels like it flows. So there will be three people in the front, an elder and two deacons. And, um, and they will have the little individual cups and the the two people holding the cups will have individual cups. The person in the center will have a patent, a plate, of the rice crackers. So if anyone has a gluten sensitivity, you don't have to worry about that. These are all gluten-free. Um, and we'll also have some of the pre-filled cups on that same plate. I think that's how we're doing it this time. Okay. Um, and then you'll come down the center aisle, receive your elements, go back to your seats, and when everyone has been served, we will eat together. So that, um, I know last week I forgot to say that, and so people were eating as they received it, and that's, I think, how we used to do it. But, you know, we're tweaking it a little bit. So just hold your elements until you're back at your seat, if for any reason you can't come forward, simply raise your hand and a deacon or I will bring you, uh, will bring you the elements. Is that okay? Does that make sense? All right. Let's prepare for worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. How shall we worship our God? We know what the Lord requires of us. Kindness to care for our neighbors. Justice to make the world an equitable place. And humility in our walk with God. Come then and let us worship. Until what we say and do are done. Please pray with me. Creator God, Redeemer and Sustainer, there are so many ways we can express our gratitude to you. Offerings of wealth and pledges of time, but you expect a bit more. You have told your people what is good and right and perfect, and so today we ask you to tell us again. Help us to see when and where to do justice and how. Help us to love kindness and teach us how to show mercy and lead us in ways to walk humbly beside you. We know you are faithful in every generation, and we trust you will show us the way. Amen. For thousands of years, candles have been lit to provide illumination, warmth, comfort, and to engage the senses. At our church, we light candles during this special portion of our service, representing our individual prayers joined together in common petition to God. For those of you at home, we invite you to grab a candle and light it with us, and remember to extinguish it when we're done. For those in the sanctuary, we invite you and your family to come up as the next song plays and light a candle, symbolizing the prayer and voice inside of your heart. In this sacred moment, we open our hearts to what God has for our lives, our homes, and our church body. Please join me in lighting the candle. Does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? Just Your God to 
seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. The fun ways to do that song is in a round and I've heard it at different um, church gatherings where they divide people up. And then I get to be in the Holy Ghost section because I sing in a different key. So. <laughs> Our service where we get to share with one or with one another our joys, the ways in which we have seen God at work this week. I mean, joys that you like that anyone would like to share. Yes, I mean. This is something I've thought about all week. So a lot of you there for the little luncheon we have on Sunday. And it was really nice. And you know, we had a, a good time chilling and chilling and all that. But the real joy for me came. What came up in the community? Not one person. They didn't have to be asked. They just jumped in like they had known all their lives. This is what you do at the moment. And it was just as joyful having people through me and just being, you know, Chatting again with one another. Um, I thought it was wonderful. I think there are some wonderful people in this church that really understand what's going on. Amen. Yes, Bill. Uh, I'm still here, so I'm not going to complain that much. But I was having a dinner party for myself yesterday morning. So I was sitting Wonderful. Sorry, we did a funeral yesterday, but I'm glad we made sure you were not. Thank you. Last time I was blessed again yesterday with my wife, with the birth of my third great grandchild. 
going to Alexis, my granddaughter Alexis, who grew up in this church and sat. And we're very proud of our sweet little um, Lady Victoria Nobrega. Lady Victoria Nobrega. Lady Victoria Nobrega. All right. What a great woman. Oh, yes, come on. My sister is on her job today. Oh, good. She's going to be in the so wonderful. My sister got a new job and it's with a bank that's around the world. So that's great. Um, and I know she's going to say it next week, but she's been reminding us all month. Next Sunday. I have a young child who's 50 years old. Celebration. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. Are there any online women? You know, I haven't seen any hands go up. Okay. I have a really hard time understanding. We all can kind of grow. Oh. And um, that's how we're going to get around. So, oh. maybe the, I don't know if it's my phone or something else. Okay. Well, we will keep working on that. I'm sorry. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, we will figure that out. All right. Ah, my microphone is red. That's one of the issues. I'm going to switch my... Okay, Renee, is that better? I think you need to talk more. Oh, okay, you need me to talk more. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to say. So <laughs> I need my little script because I have, you know, we changed the order of worship, so I have forgotten what comes next. Feedback. Okay. Okay. We changed again. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to try again. And now it is time for our pastoral prayer, our prayers of the people. Um, if you are online, if you can understand me, if you're online, simply type in your prayer request. And, um, and say it, of course, out, out loud if you would like. Um, but if you want it included in the intersections, please type it in the chat. And Renee will send that to Andy and me after service. If you are here in the sanctuary, you can use these cards that are in front of you. Um, if you have a, pro a confidential prayer request, simply mark the box that way. Um, if it's just for me only, just put confidential pastor only, and I will get it. Um, for our visitors, you can bring those forward and place them in the, in the basket, um, either um, during prayer time or certainly at the time of the offering. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for all that you provide and the blessings we receive daily from you. We know that at times we feel hopeless 
amid so much uncertainty in our world. But we trust you, O God, to bring us peace and to give comfort when we are overwhelmed with anxiety. Please help us be the calm in the chaos around us and give us the strength to overcome. Gracious God, we bring all our concerns, our doubts, our insecurities with the confidence that you are walking with us and guiding us with your Holy Spirit. Mold us into the vessels you want us to be, full of hope and joy. Gracious God, we lift our prayers for the homeless, the hungry, the lonely, the rejected, those left behind, and all suffering injustice in our communities and in the world. Hear their cries for wholeness and healing and acceptance, O loving God. Gracious God, we ask that your Holy Spirit accompany and protect our black and brown siblings and the LGBTQ plus communities dealing with violence and hatred. We pray for continued strength and courage for all being persecuted by society. We pray for our international siblings in Jerusalem and Palestine. Let us not be afraid to stand boldly to speak against all hate and violence. God, you call us beloved, even when we stand in the face of violence and fear. Please help us to continue to be agents of transformation and equity. Gracious God, help us live according to your words mandates that call us to love one another as you love us. Help us to show mercy and offer compassion and forgiveness to all in our care. Help us acknowledge when we have not been good stewards or loving to our neighbor or the stranger. Oh God, we pray that our hearts will be, will be open to the change that needs to happen here on earth so your sovereignty will be a reality and all your creation will sing your praises. Please help us to see each other as gifts from you. Let us enthusiastically embrace your love to share the good news with all who need to hear and receive your amazing grace. Hear us, O oh God, as we lift up to you those people and situations on our hearts and on our minds. Sandro. Hear us, O oh God, as we pray to you the prayer your son taught us by saying the words that are most familiar to you or the words in your bulletin. Our Creator, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. David, will you bring us our stewardship moment? I'm not much of a public speaker, so I wrote down some words. I have been attending First Christian Church for now for eight, 
uh, Sundays. A few days before, I passed by the church building and was led by God to come here. So I did. Ever since that first day, I have been invited to attend two churches with large congregations. One has an outreach to formerly incarcerated men with various groups and activities designed especially for them. One lady in particular has constantly been on me to go there. I won't go. I'm not led to do so. This church has become as home to me. There's a love and warmth here. I've seen the heart of the congregation and your heart is in the right place. The other church that I was expected to go to is a rich, vibrant one with a proven record of helping ex-felons. In fact, they are highly supportive of us. CRI, California Reentry Institute, are responsible for the transitional home I live in. I live there rent-free, don't pay utility bills, and I'm fairly well cared for. So in a way, I'm somewhat expected to go to the director's, to visit the director's home church. However, I'm not led to go there, even though they know inmates far better than any other place. I love the worship here. All the brothers and sisters I've met, the times we've shared together in the work crew, doing projects around the church, being at a potluck where the meal was lovingly prepared by all, the recent lunch last week, which was so warm and spiritual. The special lunch meeting I had with Pastor Leslie, who took time off her very busy schedule to speak with me for three hours. Christ is here. First Christian Church is doing great things in what would appear to be a small scale. No, God makes certain to give the increase. I personally look forward to helping shake and bake things up that will provide a sweet smelling offering to the Lord. It's exciting to know endless good things are on the horizon for this blessed fellowship. So I declare myself an official member. For better or worse, you are stuck with me. <laughs> I hope to be good to each of you, to be a blessing to you. Thank you for welcoming me home. Well, not much more needs to be said. <laughs> um, this is our time of sharing our gifts. Um, this week when we were reading uh, Philippians, we see that Paul writes to the believers there to keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen. Uh, let's keep doing those things. Um, I know from my own personal experience that when I give, I receive immeasurably more back than I was able to give in the first place. So it's a good time to put that into action today. Um, let me encourage you to try it. Uh, here's your opportunity as we receive our morning gifts, tithes, and offerings.
Join me in prayer as we receive these gifts. Gift-giving God, thank you for the abundance you share with your beloved sons and daughters, all of your children. We ask you now to receive what has been offered here, a portion of what you have first given us. Accept our gifts, help us put them to their best use, and encourage us to grow in our capacity to be more like you, so each of us might regularly offer the best we have to help build up your realm here and now. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The scripture reading today is Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And it is themed, or titled, God Challenges Israel. Hear what the Lord says Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord. And you, enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, but Balaam, son of Beor, answered him. And what happened with Shittim to Gilgag, and that you may know the saving accounts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He's told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? May God ask the reading of his word. May God bless the reading of his word. Here we go. Amen. Thank you, Inverly. Because of you, our lives. Okay. It's not. Okay. Last week we heard from Bridget Oyen, who told us how our generosity and our presence as her church family and her faith community has changed her life and is making her recovery possible. This week, our beloved David Gonzalez has shared his powerful testimony. Because of you, your presence, your love, your compassion, your gifts, your generosity, our church changes lives. During this series for our Stewardship Month, we've explored God's generosity in creation and giving us the ability to make choices. Last week, we talked about the power that each one of us has to work toward liberation, justice, and peace, and that that, that is a power, that there is power in not only what we have, but more importantly, who we are. This week, we're invited to consider the values of gratitude and generosity with the prophet Micah, who reminds us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Now, we all know that final verse. We've already sung three songs that have had those words in it, right? Which is good. I, I like that. So we all know that final verse, but before we get there, I want to just highlight a little bit of what's happening. 
We find ourselves in the middle of a trial of sorts. God is putting the people of Israel on trial in the first five to seven verse, five, in the first five verses. Micah, using Micah as God's mouthpiece, God utters extreme frustration and, indi and indignation over the people's faithlessness. This divine controversy ends with God saying, oh my people, what have I done to you? Why are you tired of me? Answer me. There are days when I think we as Christians might ask that same question of our siblings who don't come to church. What, what is it that God did that made you turn away? Now, there's a lot of things that the church has done that have made people want to turn away. But the question is, what has God done that has made you want to turn away? Then God proceeds to remind the people of God's faithfulness, of God's interventions on their behalf, of God's provisions of leaders for them, and God's saving acts for them. Next, the people, next comes the people's response. So you know there was that back and forth. So the first God speaks and then the people speak. And perhaps they recognize the need for gratitude, but they're also a little bit defensive and a little snarky. So what do you want us to do? Give you 10,000 gallons of oil? Give you some more rams? You want my firstborn child too? At face value, actually, the questions are not totally out of whack. They appear to be maybe on the legit side because, indeed, burnt offerings and rams and oil and, on occasion, of your first child was, indeed, an acceptable way to make things right with God. Sometimes. But of course, God really doesn't want more oil or rams or firstborn children. What God wants is for us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly alongside God. So I want to lift up for us for the next few moments the way doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly are some of the deepest forms of our generosity. I want you to, I want to pause for just a second and I want you to notice that in this series I have said very little about you giving money to the church. I want you to think about what you're going to give, and you're going to get a letter pretty soon asking you that commitment. But what I want you to hear is that God wants more than just our money. God wants our committed hearts and our committed actions. That's what God wants. Yes, the church needs money to run, absolutely. Finance committee would have my head if I didn't say that, right? But indeed, what it is that we need, in addition to funds, is we need you. We need you. And because of you, our church is able to do the that we're called to do. Because of you and the work and the volunteer time that you spend, and the fellowship that we build together, because of you, our church is able to change lives. So let me quickly walk through what I've prepared. Justice is rooted in the sacred and God-inspired generous truth that every single person is a beloved child of the divine and is created for an abundant and grace-filled 
life. Generosity, then, means working hard to dismantle the institutions and attitudes and practices that oppress and demean other people, God's people. Rooted in love, in that deep, radical, audacious, revolutionary, and dangerous love of Jesus, we are called to be generous. And so we are called to work for justice. Professor and author and activist Dr. Cornell West said one time, never forget that justice is what love looks like in public. As people of faith, we are called to heed the cries to create and do justice, to make love public. There is no one perfect way of doing this. So we need each other in our diversity of experiences to find a way here and now to do justice when we see injustice taking place. We show up for each other and we show up for Jesus. We need to examine ourselves and our institutions and our habits and practices and working together press for change in places of power in our churches, in our communities, and in our country. Generosity never accepts the status quo. Generosity never says everything is okay just as it is. Generosity says because God loves us so deeply, there is even more for us to experience. By its very nature, generosity flows out of people to make the love of God real, to make it real until justice is done on earth as it is in heaven. Because of you, our church changes lives. So what are some of the ways in which we have already started to do justice in our church? We show up with gifts that the church can use for our collective efforts, justice, and joy for all people. We come to our church with the gifts of time and of talent and of treasure that, will, that we can use to show the world that black and brown bodies matter. Black and brown lives matter. That homeless and hungry people matter. That LGBTQ plus people matter. That the church itself matters and that we can be and are profoundly relevant and purposefully alive. Yes, we are small in number, but we have big, big hearts. We are full of people who care about the world that God made and who loves the people that God loves. Because of you, our church changes lives and we can make justice public. He has told you, O oh human one, what is good, and it is to love kindness. We show up with gifts that the church can use to teach kindness. We teach our children and one another that kindness is the way, the truth, and the life. That kindness includes everyone, sees the intrinsic value in every person, and knows each person to be beloved. Every person, no exceptions. Kindness cares for widows and foreigners and strangers in our midst and single parents and refugees and those whose political 
persuasions differ from ours even within our own congregation. Because of you, our church changes lives and makes love and kindness public. God has told you, O oh human one, what to do, and we are to walk humbly. Week after week, month after month, we show up to worship, whether we are here in the sanctuary online, on Zoom, or on Facebook. We show up. You and I offer gifts that signal our willingness to walk humbly with God throughout the year, not just in October, but throughout the year. We offer gifts that are sincere expressions of our love for God and ways. We offer gifts that are humble investments in the church that is Christ's body alive in the world today. We offer gifts that can make that, that can be used to make Jesus' love real and tangible in kind and just and humble ways. Our commitments are tangible. We show up. Because of you, our church changes lives and makes humility public. Justice kindness, and the humble walk. These ways of showing us, showing up, carry us into a life-giving, reciprocal, transformative relationship with God and with all of God's children, with all of God's beloved children. Because of you, our church changes lives. Amen. The doors of the church are open, and David, I'm going to invite you to come up so that we officially welcome you. But anyone else who would like to do that as the song play, as, as, as we sing together Simple Life, um, come on, David. You won't be alone. David's going to be here with you. Oh, 
Amen. If you would, you may be seated. If you would, grab your hymnal, and we are going to officially welcome David. David Gonzalez, do you accept Jesus as the Christ and as your personal Savior? If so, say, I do, with God's help. I do, with God's help. Do you confess your faith in God and the promise with the help with, uh, excuse me, do you confess your faith in God and promise with the help of the Holy Spirit to be a faithful disciple throughout your life? I do. Do you promise to make diligent use of the means of grace <clears throat> to share faithfully in the worship and witness of this church and to give your time and talent and treasure to the proclamation of God's reign in the world? Most definitely. And will you, the members of First Christian Church of Concord, California, receive with open hearts and love this person into the full fellowship here? Will you provide support and guidance when needed? Will you, in patience and love, seek to be inclusive of our new member, modeling God's reign of love and shalom? And I just realized the people on Zoom can't understand what, we, what you just read. So, we renew our covenant as followers of the Christ and commit ourselves again to the lives of each child of God. Though diverse, we will live in unity. Though varied in viewpoints, we will seek to live out the reconciling love of God. We pledge to God our love and allegiance dedicating our whole being to the living of the good news of Jesus Christ. David, welcome home. Thank you. Yeah. Again. Often we come to this time of communion with a solemn sense of remembering the way Jesus was betrayed, condemned, and crucified. Today I want to pick up Paul's counsel to the Philippians where he tells them to rejoice in the Lord always. We often celebrate major accomplishments by inviting relatives and friends to gather around a table and share a feast and rejoice. Perhaps you can call to mind sharing a festive meal with one who has graduated or received an honor, been given a raise or rejoiced in medical recovery. You may have thrown a party because of some positive situation in your own life. Today, let us rejoice as we come to Christ's table. With joyful hearts, let us give thanks for the ways in which Jesus Christ continues to open a way when it might have seemed that there was no way. Come rejoice in the Lord as we share these gifts of the bread and cup. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples. After supper, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he offered it to his disciples saying, this is the bread of heaven, the gift of new life. As often as you eat this bread together, do so in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, he took the cup, and having given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, a sign and symbol of God's grace, poured out for you and for all people. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Um, if you are at home, this is a good time to grab what you have. Whatever you have is fine for the elements. They are just symbols after all. Uh, important thing is that we do it together. So we're going to come up to the front and remember, hold on to it, and we will all partake together.
Renee, are you ready? I am. I will. Okay. But that's okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Today? Here they come. Yeah. Wait. Here they come. Hang on. There we go. There we are. So sign up for our section if you're not signed up already. That's our weekly newsletter. So email and print it. And then follow and with us on social media, please. Uh, um, Facebook, Facebook is for Scripture Church. Church. <laughs> All of us have to FCC.net. There you go. There we <laughs> go. So today, <laughs> at 11.15, Lunch and Learn Fellowship Show. Tuesday, Tuesday the 17th, 9.30 a.m. Group, group, meet at the church. church. And, and Tuesday, Tuesday the 17th, 12th, 7th, 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 7th p.m. The finance meeting, now too. And, and then, then Saturday, Saturday the 1st, at 8.30 a.m., the whole church day. Those who are available, please come. Next Sunday, the 22nd, at 1 p.m., we're going to have a Bible study at 1 p.m. And then Wednesday, the 23rd, at 2 p.m., we're going to have a Bible study at 1 p.m. And then after closing, we stay for virtual talking out, chatted out with each other. Amen. Amen. Receive this benediction. Our worship has ended, but the offering we make to God continues to unfold in what we say and in what we do every single day. God only asks this, to be kind and merciful, to do justice, and to walk humbly with God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.